I'm excited about this series we're beginning this weekend on Psalms 91. And, you know, it, it, it's amazing how God works things out. You know, this coronavirus thing is kind of taking some momentum right now. And, and uh, I began to work on this several weeks ago, um, about three weeks ago or four weeks ago. And, and uh, it's just like it's here right at the right time. Amen. And we're going to learn some exciting things today out of Psalms 91 and over the next few weeks. It's one of the most powerful psalms in the entire Bible and one of my favorites. And it's one that we need to learn to pray. Matter of fact, I want to learn to memorize Psalm 91. Now, I've got portions of it memorized, but I'd love to be able to just memorize all of Psalms 91. But we're going to begin with... uh, where it talks about, and I've titled this message, The Shadow of the Almighty, because we need God's protection. We need God's covering, and we're going to learn how we step into that. It's just not everybody is under God's protection. Not, Not everybody is protected. Not everybody, even believers, not every believer is protected by God because we have to do our part, and if we're not doing our part, then we have to step into, and you're going to learn, learn about that in a little bit. But I wonder how many people here have had a really bad day in the past. And think about it. What would be, if I was to ask you this question, matter of fact, to ask my wife, I said, Tammy, I says, what would you say was the worst day of your life? And I was working on this message, and I just wanted, and she said, well... There's so many of them that I can't just single out one of them. And the longer you live, you're going to have multiple bad days in your life, days that you wish had not happened, you didn't necessarily see coming. And I thought the same thing. I thought, wow, if I think about it, there's all kinds of bad days. The day I got busted was one of the worst days of my life as I look back. But there's been some others before that and after that. And uh, so... Anyway, but it's during hard times that we need to be able to step into God's covering. Step into it and and find his covering. Um, During the 1930s and the end of the 1920s was the Great Depression. Now, very few people remember that. Um, My mom was a young child during that time, a very young child, and, and she can remember a little bit about it. But if you've ever read about the Great Depression, it was really bad. People were homeless. People were without jobs. This was a global phenomena. It was all over the world. Matter of fact, this is a very famous painting called Hard Times, and it's by a Dutch painter. And uh, if you kind of look at the painting, it kind of shows, you know, what this family is going through. They're, they're homeless, and they're on the side of a road. They're going someplace but really, they don't really know where to go. And um, she's got a little baby there. She's nursing, and she's carrying this heavy bag. And the, the boy there, he's just tired. They're wore out. They have no shelter. The man, it's not that he's not willing to work. He's brought his tools with him, and they, he's been carrying them on his shoulder. And, and uh, he's a very strong young man, and, and he was able to do a lot of, lot of stuff but they just had hard times hit them. And a lot of times, hard times just hit you. It's not like you, anything you did wrong or necessarily just sometimes bad things happen to good people. And so we want to talk about that because it's during these times that we need to be in place of shelter. Now, what Psalms 91 is all about is the shelter of God. It's about shelter. It's about being under his shelter during these period of times. And I like this picture here because this is, uh, you know, I, I imagine this cabin would be a really awesome place, but not right now. You know, can you imagine yourself out in a snowstorm, a blizzard? It's cold. It's miserable. No, we don't have that happen here. But how many have been in that kind of weather? It is nasty, amen? I tell people I would rather have the hottest day of our summer over those people's warmest day in the winter. And uh, 
So it's, it's just a miserable time. Can you imagine that you're just stuck in this storm? Maybe your cars broke down and you're just walking, trying to find a shelter, trying to find refuge, and, and you're walking along, and all of a sudden you come upon this cabin, and, and you, you, there's hope that maybe I can get out of the storm and I'm going to be okay and we're going to survive. We're not going to die after all. And you go up to the door of this cabin, and the door just happens to be unlocked, and you open the door and you walk in and this is what you see. That's what it's like to step out of the trials and tribulations of this life into God's shelter. That's what it's like. And, uh, but it's something we have to do. And so we're going to learn about that. Let's read verse 1 to start off. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So I have to enter into that secret place. It's something I need to go to. And it's not just when things are going terribly wrong. It needs to be a habit. It needs to be something I do. It's my day. It's my routine. Um, I like to get up in the morning uh, early. I, I wake up relatively early, not super early, but... This morning I was up at 4.30, so it was super early. It's just like you wake up at 4.30 and you go, gee, dang, you know, what do I do? So uh, you know, go back to sleep, and, and, but normally I get up about 6.30, and, and uh, first thing I do is I get out of bed, I let the dogs out, and uh, I go in to make coffee, and it, it, it's my job to make coffee. If I don't make coffee, my laundry doesn't get done for an entire week, so I cannot miss And uh, coffee's got to be ready when my wife comes out. When she comes out, if that coffee ain't ready, if I'm making it even, I'm in the process, it's like, hey, okay, you're supposed to be ready. She likes to walk out, and and that's my job, and I love doing it for her because I love my wife so much. And uh, incidentally, she's hiking right now. She's going to leave. She's up in the Grand Canyon, and they start off tomorrow. They're hiking down. Uh, Kaibab Trail, then hiking across the canyon, crossing the river, then coming out the Bright Angel Trail. And um, they are going to do this in one day. I tried to talk them out of it, but her and her sister, that's what they're going to do. And when my wife makes up her mind she's going to do something, she usually gets it done. I'm not sure what time they'll get out. It might be quite late. But anyway, they're going to do it. It's a 60-mile hike. And I, I don't know about you, but 60 miles on flat ground is like, I'm not sure I could do that. That's like, but eight miles of that straight up, I don't know. That's like, uh, that's pretty intense. But anyway, uh, getting back to the secret place. So what I do is I make the coffee and then I, I, I do my devotions and, and spend some time with the Lord, just me and the Lord. You know, just, just me and God. That's my secret place. And it's, it's, it's in my uh, dining room area, and it's just, I just sit there at the table, and I have my coffee, and I have my devotions, and I just begin to fellowship with the Lord. Amen? There's other secret places. There's times I pray elsewhere. But this is like a routine. And I really believe it's important because if you're not in the habit of going to your secret place you may not be able to find it in the time of real need. Verse 2, though, says something really profound. And let's start with verse 1 again and read into verse 2. It says, He that abideth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's, that's like God just, he's just over you and he's protecting you. And uh, then it goes on, verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Now, here is a key thing. I love the Word of God. I love studying the Word of God. It's probably the thing I enjoy more than anything. And uh, I just love it. And, uh, but there's a key phrase here for you to enter in. What is that? Oh, no. Huh? I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. See, you have to vocalize 
God's word. You can think it, but there's not a lot of power there. It's, you got to think it, but then you got to say it. Proclamation of God's word is so important. You got to speak to the devil. You got to, like Jesus did, did he not speak to the devil? You got to proclaim God's word. You got to proclaim what life is. You got to vocalize. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and the most powerful voice you can hear is your own. Your faith will never be lifted so much as when you hear yourself declaring victory, declaring it with authority. And so we have to say, if we're going to really see God take care of us, we got to not just think it or believe it, we got to declare it. So it says, I will say. Now, this is powerful because when I vocalize something, it helps me trust. Have you ever just said something and it, 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 it leaves you an emotion, a feeling? When I declare God is my refuge, he's my strength, he's my strong tower in the time of trouble, God will never leave me nor forsake me, all of a sudden I just feel better. There's something about declaring that that brings it to pass. Do you know, I, by his stripes I am healed. I shall live, Psalms 119 verse 18, I shall live and not die and yet declare the word of the Lord, amen? Those kind of scriptures, you gotta get them in your soul and you gotta proclaim them and when you run into some problems and run into some stuff, you gotta shout that out. And Psalms 91 is all about proclamation. And so if I'm gonna enter into this safe place, I need to proclaim it. How about uh, in Joel 3, uh, 10, it says, let him that is weak declare I am strong. So when you're weak, you don't go around saying, I'm weak. I'm just messed up. I just got problems. No, you go around declaring uh, that through Christ Jesus, I can do all things. It, it, he gives me strength, amen? And by his, you know, and I begin to declare who I am in Jesus Christ, not who I feel I am. So it's a declaration, and it's a proclamation. We're proclaiming something powerful. We think about David, Joshua, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all of these in a very difficult, dangerous situation. Daniel is another one. All of these proclaim vocally and loudly in spite of their circumstances who God is and what God was going to do in their lives. You release God. It's by faith that God is able. He said, when I come, will there be any faith? And he said, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. So I need to get my faith up. And if I'm going to get my faith up, I get it up by declaring his word. And the more I declare his word, the more my faith comes up, the more I get confidence, the more I begin to believe. And so you need to shout it out, amen? So as we enter into times of trouble and dismay, we need to proclaim. Now I want you to stop and think, what is coming out of your mouth? What is coming out of your mouth? Is it fear or is it faith? Is it hate or is it love? Is it a curse or is it a blessing? What's coming out of your mouth? Because we are every day saying phrases. And we need to get to the place where we're careful. The Bible says put a guard, like a soldier, like a guard with a gun, over your mouth. Because out of the mouth speaks the abundance of one's heart. And if you know anything about your heart, your heart is not, it's not talking about your, the one that thing that pumps your blood. It's talking about your inner man, your inner being. It's talking about who you are. And so out of my heart is going to come. So if I want my heart to be filled for the strength of God, I proclaim his word even though I don't feel like it. And I need to be proclaiming it on a regular basis every day because if I'm not proclaiming it on a regular basis and every day and all of a sudden, 
bam, something comes into my life unexpectedly. I didn't see it coming. I didn't know it was going to come. It just came, caught me off guard. Something horrible is happening like some of the worst days of our lives. If I don't already got it in me, it's a difficult thing to get it in you when you are down and out or somebody you love is down and out. So it becomes a lifestyle. That's why we need to set aside a moment every day that we get a hold of God. Somebody give me an amen, amen? But just notice, when you begin to proclaim good stuff, God is my refuge, God is my uh, fortress, he's my strong tower in the time of need, when I begin, I just feel better. I just feel strength. And the more I proclaim it, the more confident I become. So power is released by the word of God. And so that word of God is released into my life, my circumstance by me. Now, you may have people in your family that aren't making good choices. Maybe they're not walking with the Lord. Maybe they're not serving God. Maybe they've lost their way temporarily. You need to mom and dad or brother and sister or whoever it is in your family, your spouse, you need to begin to speak life over their lives during your time of devotion, your time of worship. Say, you know, they, they shall do this and God, you're gonna do this and God help them and, and, and God turn this around and so forth and so on. Now we go on to verse three. And in verse three, it tells us two things that this proclamation does. It says, God will save us then from hidden dangers. What are hidden dangers? Hidden dangers are stuff we don't know that's coming. We don't know, you know, um, I kind of like, you know, that eagle there. Because the eagle reminds me he's a predator. And he's looking for something to eat. And he's flying up here high and he's circling down. And he's just kind of going around and circling around and looking down and all of a sudden, he sees Don. And Don's just walking around, and he swoops down. Next thing you know, he grabs him, takes him off. I actually had this happen to me, or us, or our family. One of our family members, Mr. Baxter, or as my wife called him, Baxter. Mr. Baxter was a miniature schnauzer. And my wife really loved him, and he really loved her. And I wanted to love him, but he really hated me. <laughs> he, thought, he thought that he was Tammy's husband, not me. And uh, he would bark at me every time I came near her. But anyway, I still like Mr. Baxter. Uh, but one day, we found Mr. Baxter, and he's all shook up. He's all freaked out. He's like looking around every way and going, <laughs> he's all panicky and everything. And we noticed he had blood coming down his side, and his whole back was tore up. And, and uh, we looked at it closely, and it was, it was uh, three puncture holes, you know. And it was the talons of an owl that had got him. Now, we've seen this owl around by our house. As a matter of fact, we saw it swoop right across our property. They come down. They don't flap their wings. You, you have to see them. You'll never hear them. And they come down. They look for a rabbit. They look for a cat. They look for a little dog. I see signs out where I live all the time. Our little dog is lost. No, he ain't lost. <laughs> I used to think mine was lost, too. But no, they ain't lost. But anyway, he grabbed Mr. Baxter, and he ended up dropping him. And uh, he didn't drop him from a super big height, but he, he lived, he survived, and that's where he's all freaked out. So we took him down to the vet, and they said, sure enough, either a hawk or an owl has got him. So they stitched him up, and, and uh, matter of fact, there was, you know, both, he'd gotten both, like, six puncture wounds. And so they stitched him up, and we nursed him back to health and paid this outrageous Vet bill. How many know it's cheaper to go to any doctor than the vet? I don't know why that is, <laughs> but it's just true. And uh, but anyway, so uh, we got him all better, and it was over several weeks. We had to nurse him back to health, and he finally got very healthy. and And the very next day, one of my kids let him out, and um, that was the last we ever saw Mr. Baxter. That owl has sat around waiting for him. And uh, it makes me think, that's the devil, right? He's like a ragey, roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Looking for an opportunity. Looking for a moment to pounce on you. 
You don't see him because his camouflage is hidden in the grass, but he's, he's creeping closer and closer. And he's getting closer every day. And he's looking for that moment where he can jump on you and bring havoc and dismay to your life. It's in that moment that I better already have the protection and covering of God over my life. Amen? It's in that moment that I've better already established a word of faith and power. Amen? See, not only here does God deliver us from the snare laid by the devil. I, he, the devil's kind of like a trap, trapper, you know. He's, he's like he's trying to trap us. But according to the last part, verse 3 also delivers us from any deadly pestilence or disease. And uh, look what's in the news today. Coronavirus everywhere. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's panicking over it. Um, I don't know if I went to Walmart. You know, I, I, I went to Walmart to buy some uh, toilet paper and uh, to buy some hand sanitizer. I've been looking for it everywhere. I can't find it. And I thought, well, it's got to be on the shelves by now. So I go into Walmart and I go up to the pharmacy. I said, do you have any hand sanitizer? And the lady says, nope. We, it's sold as soon as it hits the shelf. And um, I thought, dang. So I, I went on the other side of Walmart. You know how big a store Walmart is. I went on the other side to get some toilet paper. And I look, and it's all gone. I thought, what the heck? I mean, this is, you know, this is what people buy in, in, in times of uh, uncertainty. <laughs> and... and uh, but they, they did have some toilet paper there, and it was the kind that's extra soft and extra good and extra stuff, and it was $24. A, a, $24? I go, $24? Like, $24? <laughs> Don, please. <laughs> but anyway, so I bought some $24 toilet paper. And uh, then I thought, you know, I'm going to get some Lysol because somebody put on Facebook, did you know on Lysol it actually says kills the coronavirus, human coronavirus? Well, that's what I thought. I, I saw him circled there and I thought, nah, I don't, nah, I don't know. And I looked on the can, sure enough. I thought, well, I'm going to get me some of this. And I walked in there and lo and behold, the shelves are empty, <laughs> completely empty. But I look up high and there's two boxes way up there. I thought, okay, so I'm, I'm stretching and, you know, and you know how they cut the boxes open, you know, but everything's stacked in low. I fell and knocked one can down and I caught it, put it in my thing. I was like, I'm going to give me a couple and pull the thing. And the whole box <laughs> rained down on top of me. I'm serious, just bang, 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 all over me. And, uh, and I thought, well, thank you, Lord. I thought, you know, you had kept me. You're keeping me safe, amen? And then I go down the next aisle, I'm, and, and a lady says, and I'm not really paying attention, she says, there's no bleach. There's not one bottle of bleach. This is Walmart. Like Walmart, you got this kind of bleach and that kind of bleach and this bleach and bleach. It's all bleach, but, you know, scented bleach, unscented bleach, you know, whatever. And it is completely gone. I go, oh, my gosh. People are really beginning to get a little panicky. And so I am excited about verse 3 because it says um, that God's going to protect me from that. Amen? Amen? Now, in the King James Version or in many versions, they use the word pestilence. In the Easy Read translation, they use the word disease. But I want to just read the definition of what a pestilence is. It's a, any virulent or fatal disease, an epidemic that hits the masses of people, any deadly disease that attaches itself to one's body with the intent to destroy. God's word says that he's going to protect us from that. Amen? Now, I know it's a serious time, and I'm not, I'm not just under, you know, uh, trying to make light of the coronavirus. I know it's very serious. I know there's all kinds of predictions and all kinds of stuff out there and so forth and so on. But you know, I need help during these times and I found help in Psalms 91. And you need to find help in Psalms 91 too. We need to stand under the protection of God. God says, I'll deliver you from 
the deadly disease that comes with the intent to destroy. So he's going to protect me. He's going to keep me. But I need to be vigilant and boldly proclaim that no disease is going to come into my home. Let me back up here. God will save you from hidden dangers and from deadly disease. And later on, as we go over the weeks, in verse 10, it actually says, and he will keep deadly disease out of your home. I, I like that. Out of my home, there's not going to be any disease. And I'm going to proclaim that, but I need to proclaim that because it says that I must say that the Lord is my refuge and my strength. I've got to proclaim that. That's, and I've got to do this on a regular basis. Now, I'm going to teach you how to pray. Um, Psalms 91 is really a prayer. And here's one thing I want you to see about Psalms 91 is that um, it's a prayer of shelter and protection over you, your family, your loved ones, your place of work, uh, just your community, what, what's around you. And so it's something you're going to be doing. It's something you're going to be establishing in prayer. Now, the Psalms, most of the Psalms are not just songs of praise, but they're actual prayers. And so when next time you're going through a difficult time, next time you're, re, you're going through some hardships, why don't you just Google that hardship you're going through and say, is there a scripture in the Psalms that deals with that? And then you just take that passage and pray it out loud. So I'm going to show you a woman who prays Psalms 91. She prays the whole Psalms. She prays Psalms 91. And what she does is she prays it out of She's reading it. It's kind of a guide. So she begins to read it and pray it and speak it as if not she's just not reading it, but she's speaking it into her life, her reality. And then in portions, she will add her own verbiage. And at times, she will memorize part of it and not need to look at the Scripture. But wouldn't it be cool if over the next few weeks we could memorize Psalms 91? And every day we just get up. I got up this morning and I said, I declared in Psalms 91.10 that no deadly disease shall enter my home or into my family's homes or into my church, amen, or into my community. I thought I'm just going to take this on and bring it on. So let's listen to her prayer. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, you're my Lord, you're my God, you're my source. You're the one in whom I trust. You're the one who delivers me from the snare of the trapper, and you deliver me from the deadly pestilence. Your faithfulness to your promise is my shield against the enemy. I'm not going to be afraid of the terror by night, what another person could do to harm me. I'm not going to be afraid of the eras, the, the wars and rumors of war. I'm not going to be afraid of pestilence, sickness and disease, or, or destruction, the natural disasters. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not approach me for any purpose because I've made you, O oh Lord my God, I've made you my dwelling place. Therefore, no evil will befall me, neither will plague or calamity come near my household. Lord, I thank you that you're the one, Lord, that protects us from all of these things. You even give us your angels as a protection. Father, I thank you that we have authority over the enemy. We don't have to be afraid of what the enemy does. We put the enemy under our feet. We don't have to be afraid uh, of the lion or the young lion. We don't have to be afraid of the destruction of any parts of the enemy. Father, I thank you for that. Lord, you're so good to us. Because we love you, Lord, you said that you would deliver us. You said that you would set us securely on high, far above all the principalities and powers. We don't have to fear any of those things. You said we'd call and you'd answer. You said when we were in trouble, you'd rescue us out of our trouble, that you'd rescue us out of any trouble that we come into. Father, I thank you that you said you would honor us. You said that you would satisfy us with a long life, and not just a long life, but a satisfied long life. And you would allow us to behold Jesus, our salvation, our health, our healing, our deliverance, our protection, and our provision. Father, we can never thank you enough for this protection covenant. Father, you've covered everything that could possibly come against us. And Father, as we dwell in your shelter, you bring all of those things about in our lives. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, Father, for loving us this much. In Jesus' name.
Now, she prays that in about one minute and 54 seconds. Can you find one minute and 54 seconds tomorrow morning or tonight before you go to bed? One minute, 54 seconds. That's the way to pray, amen? And you can pray longer, but her prayer is effective and she's simply using the word of God as her template, as her guide to pray. And you can do that very same thing. It's so important that we begin to declare that we are under the shadow of the Almighty. And though around us all kinds of bad things may be taking place, like I love this picture because this guy's like walking in this horrible storm. But notice the rain is not raining where he's standing. It's raining to his right and to his left. But we're gonna proclaim, you know, whether it be the coronavirus or whether it be terrorists or whether it be a war, or whether it be what everything that may come in the future, an illness into your family or whatever, we're going to declare life, not death. Amen? And it's a habit. We got to get in the habit, and we get in this habit by declaring it every day, not just when we're in trouble. So many people wait to pray when they're in trouble. The rest of the time, they're just praying, God, give me this, give me this, let me have this. Amen? And there's nothing wrong with asking God to help you get stuff, but let's have a moment every day. If we can take two minutes a day and set that aside of a declaration, just get out your Bible, get out the Word, and just read through Psalms 91. Speak it out loud. There's something about speaking it out loud, not just thinking about it, but speaking it out loud. There's so much power in that. Can you say amen? amen. Now, next week, I'm going to talk about under his wings. And uh, I love this picture because this is what geese do when they have their young. You know, they, they have their young on the shore, and then as they begin to get a little big, they take them out onto the water. And uh, they teach them how to swim. They teach them how to, to eventually hunt and survive and so forth and so on. But what they do is they protect them from the sun and from predators that are flying up there, you know, like some hawk that would just love to get one of these little chicklets and uh, fly off, or gooselets, or whatever they're called, and, uh, and it's just a protection. We need to see that we're under his protection. You know, it's a dangerous world out there. It's a dangerous world, and there's some bad stuff going on with this coronavirus. We're not sure, and governments are not sure, um, but I'll tell you this one thing I can tell you for sure. All the governments of the war world are freaked out. All of them, not just some of them. And closing borders and quarantining people, they don't just do that stuff without some serious worries and concerns. So our government is doing everything it can to protect us. I really believe that. I really believe we have the best people on this, and I believe that other countries have the best people. They're not taking this lightly, but we got God, amen? Amen. And that's what we can touch, and that's what we can begin to get a hold of. And you need to pray for the scientists and, and all the research people that are looking for a, 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 some kind of a, a cure or some kind of, a, a, what do you call it? Vaccine, amen? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say this. Vaccines are important to get. I know there's those people out there that say, oh, no, I'm not going to get vaccine because I'm going to tell you that's polio was a vaccine, or polio was a virus, rather, and it was a vaccine that stopped polio, and polio is a horrible thing. I saw it in Africa. It's a terrible thing. My mom lived during that time. How many got that polio shot where it shows you the, the, uh, the ugly mark? Yeah, the, good, good. We need the polio shot. But these things are, are important. You know, I'm, I'm just saying that we need to be careful. We need to be smart, and, and, but not walk in fear. Amen? We need to walk in confidence that God's got us during this time. Would you bow your heads with me as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed and we're in attitude of prayer right now. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to encourage you to invite Christ to come into your heart. Because having the divine protection of the God, of the God we serve begins with accepting Christ. There's something that is much, much, much worse than the coronavirus. 
has been around for a long time and it's a real thing. And there's lots of people that suffer in this place. It's called hell. Hell's a real thing. It's a real place. People go to hell because they ignore the greatest gift God ever gave us, his only begotten son. But it says, as many as should call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And we're not gonna go to hell, amen? During this time of the coronavirus, let's also think about where our relationship is with God. Because none of us know when that moment's gonna come and all of a sudden we're gonna step into eternity. It's just like Don Piper shared last week and his testimony of how he's just driving to church and hits a truck or a truck hits him and next thing you know, he's, he's dead and, and uh, you know the rest of the story, but, but the point being, he didn't think that day that was gonna be his last day. He was healthy, he was alive, he was on his way to meet his wife and go to church and, and never anticipated that's gonna happen. We don't know what the next hour or the next week or the next year holds for any of us. That's why we need to be prepared now. And so if you're watching this video online, I wanna encourage you to receive Christ right now. If you're sitting here today in the main sanctuary or extended seating, I wanna encourage you to, if you don't know the Lord as your savior, to invite him in. That is the first step to stepping into his place of shelter. So as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, if you don't know the Lord but want to receive him this morning, raise your hand up to God. He will see your hand. God sees that hand and 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 that hand, that hand and that hand. Hand over here, all over. If you're watching online, just raise your hand up wherever you're at. God sees it's all about God seeing your hand. You can put them all down. Now I want to encourage you to pray this prayer. Pray it out loud. That's, it's so important we speak life out loud. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask not only those who raise their hand, but everybody here. Let's just join them and support and pray with them. Say these words. Say, Heavenly Father, today I invite Jesus Christ to become my Lord and Savior. I surrender me to you. Forgive me for the mistakes I've made in this life, the sins I've committed, Holy Spirit, begin to dwell within me and fill me with your presence. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. And also, Father, I pray that no pestilence shall come into my home, or my place of work, my community. I'll be safe. And all the people I love will be saved. And that I'll be quick to tell others about the hope that now lies within me, that they too might receive you as their Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering.